Hello there! Welcome back to Book Critique, a show where we talk about why you should become a hat person. My name is Imogen, and today we're actually going to talk about Hills Like White Elephants by Ernest Hemingway. If you are a college student, you probably are being assigned this book. I know when I was in college, still am in college, I've had to read this book like a million times. And I say had to in a begrudging way, but I actually really love it, and I have a lot to say about it. So I'm going to start off with a basic general summary for the kids back home, and then I'm going to go into a little more detail about some historical context and basically answer the big question that all of your professors are asking. How do we know the stories about abortion? I used to tutor at my college, and I had a student come in with her essay where she wrote the thing based on having a plastic surgery. And she was completely convinced that this was about plastic surgery. And I just felt so bad to tell her that like she was wrong. And she said, you know, literature is interpretive so she can have her own opinion. And I was like, you're wrong. <laughs> I didn't know how to say it without sounding mean, but like everybody knows it's about abortion. So that's the big question that I will be going into after the very, very, very brief summary. So our story starts off with a girl named Jig. She is on vacation with her American boyfriend and they are waiting at a train station that is going to Madrid. He speaks Spanish and she doesn't. So they order some drinks, a couple of anise beers, and he orders for her and is translating the whole conversation for her. That's kind of the first introduction to this like sense of guidance in the story where he's kind of like leading the way and kind of guiding her throughout the plot. Um, which was an interesting choice on Hemingway's part because he's the one who's trying to convince her to have this operation that he is not actually naming. Neither of them are saying the name of the operation. But based on the information and context that were given, based on their lifestyle, they got into a situation. And now if they have this operation, they can keep going forward the way that they were going. But if they choose, if Jig chooses not to have the operation, then their lives are going to change drastically and things will never be the same. And in general, based on the way that Jig is talking, she doesn't think that things are going to be the same either way. I just want to kind of touch on like a couple of little details that might come up. So they order beers and Jig says that they taste like licorice and he says that's the way with everything. Licorice is obviously a very a very bitter flavor and it's basically saying that she feels very bitter towards everything now. Like the simple things that they used to enjoy like beers, um, this lifestyle that kind of got them into the situation. It just feels bitter and has a weird taste in her mouth now that she knows the repercussions to her actions. So she tries to say jokes to like lighten the mood and make things back to the way that they were, but they just aren't. So she sees some hills in the distance and she says that they look like white elephants. So she's trying to kind of have like a child like sense of humor but it just kind of falls flat and they start arguing again which you can tell they've been doing for a while now <laughs> they keep trying to basically act like everything's fine and it's clearly not because this huge decisions weighing on them both so throughout the story he kind of keeps saying stuff like you know basically it's your choice it's your choice like it, you know i want you to do what you want but he without saying it outright he just kind of keeps implying that things will be happier and better after if she chooses to get this abortion. So the way that we know that the boyfriend is trying to get Jig to have the procedure is he keeps saying things like, it's perfectly simple or referencing other people that he knows that have had this operation and then everything worked out fine in the end. Um, but Jig is skeptical and she is basically saying like, I love you and I'll just do whatever you want me to do. I just want everything to be fine. But she kind of knows that it won't be. And he just wants her to basically get it done so he doesn't have to change his whole entire life for the situation. He says, we can have everything. And she says, no, we can't. We can have the whole world. No, we can't. We can go everywhere. No, we can't. It isn't ours anymore. It's ours. No, it isn't. Once they take it away, you can never get it back. And basically she's saying that now that she knows the repercussions to her actions, she can't go back to having that carefree life. So it's kind of like a, a maturing moment for her where she thought that she could travel anywhere, see the world, do whatever she wanted, and just not face any repercussions. But now her whole life is kind of on the hinge of changing. And she thinks that even if she were to get the operation, like he wants her to, that she won't be able to just go back to living the way that she was living. The story ends very openly. Um, the boyfriend like walks over and puts their bags over by the train track, but he looks and he doesn't see the train coming. They're, they're just kind of still arguing as it ends. So she hasn't made up her mind yet and he's still upset about that. So that's the very, very general summary. They arrive at the train station, they order some beers, they argue, and then when they're leaving, they still don't have an actual answer and the train has not come yet. Okay. 
So now I'm going to give more information on how we know that Ernest Hemingway was talking about an abortion, even though he never explicitly says that word. I think one reason why Ernest Hemingway is so much appreciated in the literary community is because he has a complete like mastery over the English language. He edited the crap out of his stuff and refined everything. Every word placement that you see was very strategically chosen in his work. So that's why when we have lines like, the girl looked at the ground the table legs rested on, we know that it was chosen for a reason. When you picture that, table legs rested on, that's a really weird way to describe a table, but it gives us insight into, you know, where Jig's head was at. When you think about the way that a woman, her legs would be positioned during that kind of, you know, hand movements, during an abortion, her legs would be rested upward and like held in place. So I think that that language choice, you know, subtleties like that do show us kind of what Hemingway was talking about. Also too, when I was tutoring the girl, she kind of seemed frustrated that Ernest Hemingway wouldn't just be plain and say what he was talking about. But the thing is that most of the story is written in dialogue. So he made it so like you were sitting in a restaurant overhearing someone else's conversation. And there's a reason why these characters would never have actually said the word abortion out loud in that place and time. The train was going from Barcelona to Madrid. And when you think about, you know, where in Spain that's located, it's not like they're in a train station even like leaving Spain. They're going to clearly be staying in Spain. And this is a, you know, based on the way that the American is pressing the issue, um, this is a procedure that would probably, they'd want to take care of it pretty soon. They're going to have this procedure in Spain, basically. And that's important because Spain was a very Catholic country. And the thing about Spain is that because it was a Catholic country, it was very religious and having an abortion was like super duper illegal. Abortion wasn't decriminalized in Spain until 1977. This story was written in 1927. So that's like a 50 year difference between when this was written and when it was decriminalized in Spain. So that's how we know that there's a reason why they wouldn't just be like screaming at a public restaurant, we're gonna, we're considering having an abortion because that would maybe get them into trouble. And then also to my former person that I tutored, she had the point of it was plastic surgery, but plastic surgery wasn't popularized until the 1960s anyway. So that's very, very unlikely. Hemingway also used the setting itself to kind of show what was happening in this situation. Um, even the fact that they're at a train station is really important because it's, it's a launching point. So they're waiting for changes to come and it kind of adds an emphasis on time and how this decision needs to be made now. They need to either get on the train or not. That adds a sense of tension because they're waiting for this decision to be made. The way that he describes the train station is interesting because on one side you have like really dry land and then on the other side it's really fertile land. So it's almost kind of representing two different um, ways that they could go either ab abortion or staying fertile and having the baby. So there's a lot of little details and obviously I wanted to keep this video short so I couldn't include everything, but those are the main points that stood out to me as far as how we know that Hemingway was talking about an abortion. If you liked this video, I have other very similar summaries of short stories over yonder. And if you've made it this far, comment what kind of hat you would wear or do wear in your day-to-day -day life. Maybe the event that you would wear the hat to. I like berets and I wear them to work quite a bit. Oh, and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.